So the other day I found this 22 inch LCD monitor in the trash. Uh, so I brought it home and I figured I would uh, see if I could figure out what's wrong with it. Basically what happens is that when you power this thing on, the backlight for it doesn't stay on for very long. It'll display an image and then it'll just shut off. Uh, nine times out of ten, the cause behind that is something simple like bad capacitors on the power board. So I'm just going to show you how to go ahead and, uh, and replace those. The first thing to do is to go and remove all the uh, stand hardware. Now most of these monitors just snap together for the case, so you have to be a little bit careful when doing this as you might damage the case, but basically just have to get a screwdriver in there and disengage the, the plastic snaps and uh, just work your way around the case until the whole thing is free. Now, the thing that uh, you're probably going to have to take apart is the actual power module. This is where the capacitors are uh, that control the backlight. So the problem is most likely in here. So I'll just start by disassembling this. Okay, so on this particular monitor, the, uh, the controls for the signal go through this particular board. That's actually connected to your uh, VGA and DVI connectors. Uh, that also contains the, uh, the ribbon cable that actually feeds the LCD panel. Uh, this is probably not the issue. The actual power control board is this larger looking one over here. Uh, this is the one I'm going to take apart and uh, see if I can find if there's any problem with it. So when I look closely at the power board, you can see this assortment of capacitors. What I'm looking for is to see if any of the tops of these cans are, are bulged up. And what I see is that this one right here looks like it is. In addition, you can actually see a little bit of a brown stain on the top of it where some of the dielectric has uh, leaked out. So that's probably the source of our problem. Uh, I'm going to have to replace that one. So you'll need to remove the bad capacitor before you can put in a new one. Uh, to do that, I use this. It's a desoldering braid from Radio Shack. It's basically a copper braid. And what you do, if this is the uh, ones I want to unsolder. I just take a little bit of the braid, press it against the solder, and wait for it to wick the excess solder away. You can see the solder has been removed from these two pads here, and this should allow me to remove the bad capacitor. There we go. So here's a closer look at the failed capacitor. You can see the bulged top and a little bit of the dielectric actually leaking out right here. And uh, if I want to replace this one, the values on this particular capacitor are 1000 microfarad, and it's rated at 25 volts. If I'm going to replace it, I need to find one that has the exact same capacitance rating and a voltage rating of 25 volts or higher. So, I went to Radio Shack and I purchased this. You can see this is rated at the exact same capacitance value, 1000 microfarad, and is rated at 35 volts. So this was a $1 replacement, and it should do the trick. So with these types of capacitors, you always have to make note of the polarity when you remove them. I happen to write down right here a little negative sign. That indicates that this is the negative side of the capacitor. Uh, that's matched by this little minus symbol on the capacitor itself. So when I go to place it again, I'll just have to make sure it lines up. So it just goes and fits in the same holes. And it should fit like this. And now I'll just have to solder it down. And now I'm ready to solder the new capacitor in. It's pretty straightforward. There we have it. 
I'll start reassembling it now. Okay, so now we should be able to uh, put the back on and give this thing a test. Okay, now I've got it all back together. Test it out. Turn it on. Oh, and you can see now it works.